Hey, speed. All right, PC33, take one, intro, marker. Hey there, Polycasters, Rob here. Welcome back to Ask Polymer, the show where you send in your hashtag questions and we do our best to answer them. Okay, our first question today comes from Marco, who asks, what about internationalization? Do I have to use an external JavaScript framework or is there some specific Polymer solution for that? So that's a really good question and one that I get all the time. Uh, right now we have an element that'll help with internationalization. Uh, you can check it out over here. It is called i18in message. It's actually written by uh, Eric Beilman, one of our team members, and used on a few of our sites. And basically the way it works is you take your text, you wrap the i18 message tag around your text, and then you give it a message ID, which is synced up with a JSON file that loads different language packs. So that is one solution that you can use for internationalization today. It's not you know, the, the bulletproof perfect solution for all scenarios, but it is something to get you started. And we're also currently working on a new set of elements called carbon elements. And our hope is that for those element sets, we'll be rolling out some internationalization solutions as well. So thank you for that awesome question, Marco. All right, our next question comes from Cher, who asks, with the emphasis on mobile, can Ripple and other animations be turned off for 3G, and does that matter? So that's a really cool question. Uh, for something like the paper Ripple animation, you actually can turn that off on your elements. If you just add a no ink attribute to the element itself, it will disable the Ripple. So for instance, if you add that to paper button, it'll turn it off. Uh, now, for something like mobile, what you can do is you can use an Iron Media query to set up a handler to check the screen size. And if it's a smaller screen, you can then remove that attribute. Perhaps if it's a larger screen, you could add it back. So that way you could you know, have it on desktop, and maybe take it away from mobile to get kind of maximum performance there. As always, you want to be measuring your performance. If something does seem like a bottleneck, then yeah, you know, use a strategy to try and remove it. So uh, thank you, Cher, for that really awesome question. All right, our next question comes from Mark, who asks, how do you generate documentation for elements? And how do you document packages? So to document an element, what I typically do is I start with this thing called the seed element project. You can check that out over here on GitHub. And what that's going to do is give you a boilerplate element, as well as in the index file, this thing called iron component pages. And iron component pages is going to read all the comments in your element itself and generate documentation for you. Now, there's special annotations that you have to use, and you can check out this style guide over here, which explains the different annotations. Uh, but if you basically work with that project as your starting point for your new elements, then you're going to get documentation basically for free. It's a pretty cool setup. So uh, definitely check out Seed Element and see if that meets your needs. So uh, thank you, Mark, for sending in that really cool question. OK, our next question comes from Nicholas, who asks, how do you use CSS mixins with media queries? So that is an interesting question. Uh, right now, with the current limitations of the style shimming system, in a media query, you can consume variables. However, you can't set new variables or custom properties. So what you can do is use an iron media query element to check the different screen sizes. And when it's a smaller screen size, you can call Polymer's update styles method and actually like pass in new properties that way. There's actually a GitHub issue which discusses this and shows an example of how you can work around it. So you can check that out over here. And you know, for, for working with mixins, what I can do is I can throw together a little JS bin and add that to the show description so you can see how that works there as well. So thank you, Nicholas, for sending in that awesome question. OK, our last question comes from Jonathan, who asks, uh, could you talk a little bit about the difference between paper list box versus paper menu? So yeah, uh, first of all, way to have an eagle eye, Jonathan. And I don't even think paper list box is in our catalog yet. It is up on GitHub, so you're totally on the ball. The way that I understand things is paper lists box is kind of like the select element when you add a multi attribute to it. So you get you know, multiple things that you could choose from. Perhaps you want to even choose like one or two items at the same time. However, the uh, paper menu is sort of more of like a traditional drop down menu. So that would be the difference between those two. Uh, again, thank you so much for sending in that question, Jonathan. So that's it for today. Thank you, everyone, who sent in those awesome questions. If you yourself have a question, you can ping us on a social network of your choosing at hashtag AskPolymer, or leave it for us down below in the comments. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.